Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to today's show. And today we are going to look at how I paint the decks of my early war, early World War II, U.S. Uh, warships. Mostly battleships and aircraft carriers. We'll do destroyers and, and cruisers and some of the others another time. But today we're going to look at battleships and, um, and aircraft carriers. Um, now with that in mind, there's this little phrase that I really want to emphasize today. Let's check it out. This comes from a Facebook modeling page I follow. Got a question, why sometimes when people post their work, do some just bash them? Everyone is at a different skill level and we are always learning new tips and tricks. We all have had a cool idea in our head only to have it not exactly turn out the best when built. Constructive criticism is good and advice, but to bash someone can make them give up the hobby. Okay, so build for you. Okay, build for the excitement that you get, the experience. And, and modeling, as you know, it isn't just about building what you've got in front of you and completing it. Sure, that's a big part of it. But the, the hunt for the parts, <laughs> for the kit, you know, that's, that's all a part of the experience. Uh, what a great experience modeling can be. Unfortunately, there's a lot of folks out there who want to be experts or who want to throw in their opinion on the way something should be and will tell you that, well, you're wrong because of, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Build for you and build for you only. Now, for me, I like to build things that are fairly accurate because I'm trying to portray a certain piece of history. And what I would build 20 years ago and what I would build now is going to be different because I've done more research or I've had more information come to me or I've learned some new techniques or there's been a new, uh, more accurate kit, whatever you want to call it. But for me, accuracy is, is, is pretty important. And accuracy, as we're going to find out, accuracy can be subjective to, to some people. So we're going to look at the decks of uh, U.S. warships right around the beginning of, the, of World War II and how there were some changes and how I model those. We are going to look at some new information I found out about decks of U.S. warships early on in the war because that's pretty much what I model, is the early part of World War II. So we're going to go back almost 25 years here. This USS California is a resin kit in 1 3 scale. And I did a little bit of research, at least what research was available at the time, so I could build this in December 7th, 1941 outfit. And I thought I had done pretty well. It's a dark gray. It's got the, the light upper top part. So this is measure one scheme and the wood decks. This was a part of a display that I did over the Winter Olympics in uh, 2002. And these the rest of these were in 1426 scale. They were scratch built and modified Arizona kits. And they're all gray. They're all uh, gunship gray. What is it? 34118 um, gunship gray with a... Uh, lighter upper top and the wood decks the same color and I don't remember what color wood I used. So first we're going to talk about deck color. My friend Chris R. Red, who built this Arizona and this Vestal that uh, we did a piece on just a couple of months ago, we have some friends who are Pearl Harbor survivors and they were telling us that in pre-war years they would holly stone these decks, they would keep them beautiful and shiny and, and a very light, light teak color. So, okay, that's how we started to paint our ship models when we were first doing our Pearl Harbor ships. And you can see in this picture of the USS Texas in like 1940 or 41, that's a very light colored deck. I love these colored pictures. They're hard to find though, but that's a pretty good indication of how I should probably be painting the deck. 
Now here we have the USS North Carolina taken in 1941, measure one scheme, and look at the color of the teak deck on this. It's obviously not been holly stoned for a lot of years. It's just a nice new beautiful teak deck. Hmm, that's uh, very interesting. And here again is the Texas. This is the bow area. This was taken in 1941 as well. Kind of gives you a good um, look at it when it's wet, the, the teak color when it's wet. So I'm really starting to rethink the way I do my decks. I don't want to do them quite so light. I really want this more of this, this teak color that I'm seeing in these last few photographs. So here is my USS Oklahoma. And I did a review on this not too long ago. I painted the deck in a radome, radome tan, and we'll look at that here in just a moment. And I sprayed the entire upper deck with this. Kind of a nice light color that I seem to be okay with for that that holly stoned, um, you know, faded or not faded, but pale um, teak color. But then, and and here it is. This is from Mission Models, and this is their. It's called Radome Tan. To me, it looks pretty good. Pretty good deck color. But if I want something a little bit more teak, uh, you know, darker color, well, there's this old tester model master wood, and you can see the color there. It doesn't look too bad. Now, uh, it's not uh, not not the best, but you you see the results. And I think what's on the boat deck there is a little bit more of what I'm after for the Pearl Harbor ships. Because when I look at the ones I've already done, I've uh, been working on, so the Arizona, the Nevada, and the uh, the Oklahoma here, um, I'm really thinking a darker color to go with the darker color color of the hull looks a whole lot better than that, that too light of a color. Now, what if I'm doing an aircraft carrier? So here's the Enterprise, pre-war, and you can see how beautiful that, that wooden deck is on it. Uh, Enterprise, Lexington, Saratoga, there was a memo that came out in 41 to get their decks painted a blue color, but man, that is a beautiful wood color. And here it is, up close, that uh, uh, that flight deck mahogany. They had a kind of this reddish stain they put on it, and man, that is absolutely beautiful. Pre-war, of course. By the time December came around of 41, the deck had been painted blue. And this is a model I did in 700 scale a few years ago of the Enterprise using uh, at the time what I thought was the correct colors and turns out pretty good. I like the way that the uh, the deck looks on this. We'll compare it to some real deck colors here in just a moment. So first up we have a battleship with that painted uh, blue deck and here we have I believe this is the Texas in 44 with their painted blue deck this really is a nice picture definitely get the the color there and then the uh, I believe this is the Enterprise with some damage to her deck after it had been painted with this uh, this weather deck blue so it kinda gives you some idea of what the reality looks like so nowadays here's the color that I use for my decks it's uh, life color UA number 624 and it's their 20B which is uh, deck blue and you can see the results here on my USS Nevada that I've just sprayed this straight on and I think it's going to be just fine. So remember I said I had something new that I wanted to uh, to talk about and look at. So let's go back to this picture of the California I built years ago and there was always something that bugged me. So the decks the decks around the bridge, the decks up on the on the fighting top and whatnot. Um, well, I just painted them dark gray in the front, and in the fighting top, it's just uh, that light gray. And I knew there wasn't something right about that. I knew there had to be something else. So let's go to this picture of the USS Wasp in, uh, I want to say this is like 1941. And you'll notice something kind of odd in some of those decks around the um, the superstructure here. Um, that's kind of a reddish brown color. That reminds me of a product called linoleum. And it dawned on me this really makes sense because it's a non-slip type of a coating. You can see this farther away picture of the wasp and it, it sticks out. 
So I went to my reference material and I was looking at some pictures I had of one of the museum ships, the USS Texas, and here in this area of the ship, uh, that's linoleum. That's a brown linoleum. For those of you that don't know, linoleum is a roll media based product. And back in the, uh, the 20s and 30s, and this, this stuff's been used for a very long time. And what it is, it's a half inch thick gelled linseed oil with wood cellulose filler, which, you know, like sawdust, which uh, in the, the case of what was used back then was usually sawdust and hemp fibers. In the post-war years, my dad sold and installed uh, floor coverings, so he knew all about linoleum, and he's the one that, that told me about it. So I had to wonder, was this something that would be on some of the exposed areas of the battleships on December 7th of uh, 41? I look at this reference photo here, taken in February of 42 um, on the U.S. west coast of the Pennsylvania. You know, great, it's already been repainted for the most part, and I start uh, zooming in and looking closer at certain areas. And if I look really close underneath the Mark 19 gun director and right around the conning tower area, there is definitely a brown color there. Now there's some other brown, but that's due to the painting process that, that, that they're stripping and repainting. But I do definitely see what appears to be some linoleum. So now let's look at this picture here from the USS California taken in early 1942 during uh, salvage efforts looking down at the boat deck area. And on the very far left, bottom corner, that appears to be linoleum on that particular deck. And finally, here's a great picture from Life magazine taken of the USS Idaho looking back at the, uh, the rear quarter deck. And you can plainly see this particularly raised deck here is definitely a brown linoleum. Ha ha. Yep, battleships had it for sure. Now here's an interesting one. This looks like that link block rubberized matting and it would make sense it looks like it's black it would make sense to put this around say newly installed anti-aircraft weapons this was taken mid-war on one of the US battleships in the Atlantic so definitely had some kind of an anti-slip coating there now as if I had any doubts left there's this memo written in December of 1942 to the fleet to replace linoleum link block rubber matting and other deck coverings removed in the interests of fire prevention. Now the reason for this was the recent battles off of Guadalcanal where quite a few of our ships were lost and one of the things that was noted is that the linoleum would catch fire and it would burn and create these incredible fires. So to replace it there is under procurement new nonstick deck covering material of which ferox is typical. And if you're wondering what Ferox is, well, here is the modern equivalent of it, and it's basically a epoxy paint with uh, it's a non-slip coating. So now I need to find a paint that I can use for linoleum color. Life Color makes this linoleum color here. It's Japanese navy, but I I like it, but I like this even better. And this is uh, British Crimson, I believe it's called, by Model Master. It's an acrylic and I just mix a little tiny bit of brown with that and I get the results that I want. And here are the preliminary results on the 3D printed USS Arizona bridge that I got from Model Monkey and I do like this. We'll see it's a little bit reddish but I think that's because of the lighting uh, of taking this picture it actually really is a little bit darker brown. So I'm gonna try it on my USS Washington bridge that, uh, that I'm putting together and again it looks too red but it's just the lighting and my camera settings because it is definitely browner than this. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this kind of a part one how I'm going to be painting decks or how I do paint decks on my World War II US ships. So thanks for joining us today folks. <laughs>